the final conclusion. The final finals. Game three of the finals from the UK Regional 2014. Final conclusion doesn't make any sense. The final con- It's the end of the end. It's the end of the end. Zach and I are here in the booth for you guys. We have Anton on the left. We have Chris on the right. This is game three of a storm of a match uh, from the UK. Important Regional to know, is there. Dark Sphere. This is pre-restriction. So on the right, we've got cheesy smugglers yellowing it up over there. On the left, we have a sweet uh, Imperial Scummy deck going down that uh, was actually able to win earlier. Interestingly, both players won as the dark side in the finals. Very confusing. Very weird for this format because you've got super smugglers and you've also got the old school sleuth. So curious to see who comes out on top here. Even given the... uh the way that the first two games went, I would say that Chris has a distinct advantage having light side in the tie break here. There's just no account. There's no reason that the light side shouldn't be winning over 50% of the matches. Yeah, that game one where Anton won as the dark side uh, looks pretty bad for the dark side until the very end there with that devastator play. So I would put the advantage to Chris here, but that's why we play the game. Game three, we'll see who comes out on top. We can't just talk him out. We got to play him out. I mean, we could talk him out. I'll talk it out right now if you want. All right, who is it? <laughs> Two holding all the cards, three free holders. Go. Game. Chris. Man, that, that's a brutal way for a finals to end, by the way. It is a brutal Feel way. Death by free holders. Chris, to me, feels like a very aggressive and, like we said, kapowy kind of player, right? Kapow. He wants to He wants to just beat you down. Anton seems a little trickier. But uh, we also didn't see much from his light side deck, so I didn't get a feel for what he likes to do. Well, that light side deck is not a tricky deck. No, it's not a tricky deck. Not a tricky deck. So the dark side definitely has got some interesting things going on. I think Chris is keeping over here. I saw two uh, free holders, no holding on the cards. Well, so. I think he already mulliganed the first one. Oh, We saw him pitch it. It was like it. all edge cards. It was bad. Bad. All right, so we got defense protocol. Reduce your reserve by one to damage a unit at the start of your turn. We also have uh, general's imperative, which increases your hand size by one. That works pretty well together. Yeah, that seems great together. And death and despair. And we got raise the stakes and two against all odds on the right. That's a lot of damage. Boy, that is why the light side is unbelievable. That's why the smugglers are unbelievable. Yes. Someone punch a smuggler. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. And punch a smuggler. And punch a smuggler. All right, let's kick it off here with Anton. Get Chuck one to draw one. Bounty. Let's think about that for a second. Where are we getting that from? Ah, it's Bosk. That's the Trandoshans. It's either that or Greedo. And, uh, well, it <laughs> we ain't saw Bosk earlier. Yeah, we know Bosk is here. It's really cool, actually. This is something we see a lot with Scum being splashed into Sith and Imperial, where you run the uh, Jawa and the Trandoshan objective sets because they only have one card each that require the resource. It seems tricky, but it works. So it's uh, it's pretty nice. Tricky, but it works. Story of my life, I think, really. A little tricky, Wooly. Okay, slicing in over there from... Uh... From Chris, he sliced. Consider himself sliced. Leo Blizzard. And there's Blizzard. Fair enough. We got some freeholders about to happen here, don't we? Yeah. At this point, Dark Side is just trying to dump cards. He started with one extra. Um, nice. Well, still he's done a great get, job. Still going to get to play three, but I think that leaves him with four cards in hand, unless he didn't draw an extra. In which case, he's cheating. What do you think about the TIE Fighter having only edge-enabled icons? I feel like that's probably the best way to handle that. Yeah, I mean, I think a one-cost unit with one health and two icons edge-enabled is not the greatest unit of like, all time, but it's worth playing. TIE Fighter, you see it in the in the art there. TIE Fighters just, more, more than not, they just die without doing anything, so... They kind of just soak damage. See, holding all the cards there... Um, oh, that's going to help. Anton's on... I think he's only got three cards in hand, which is interesting. He should probably have four. But... Uh, we'll see how this goes. Four would be all the difference, right? Because one holy only cards means you can play both Correct, free yeah. holders. Not accounting for the middle objective there. Okay, first thing, hold all the cards. There you, you go. Bet. Oh, uh, Han. Uh, Han. I thought it was another holy only cards. Oh, another man. Another free holders. There we have it. He almost had the god opening there if he just has another holding. Holy only cards would have been the goods. All right, so he's discarding a card here. Down to four you cards know, in hand. You know, this is actually awesome. I, I, I'm i just now really appreciating that Anton's probably running that objective only to combat free holders. Yep, just to get cards out of hand. Use it when you can, but you just let you play more cards. Well done. Hey, that's great. Hey, that's there it is. That, that was not picked up on around here for sure. We We never went to that objective to solve that problem. Luckily, we didn't have to worry about it for too long, so... Got the axe. 
All right, so I think it's tempting here to play Han, actually, as your four. Uh, swing, blow up the uh, phase one trooper, and then you're probably pretty safe to lock down the board here. Just gain control. We'll see. As we said, Chris is a very... Uh, Kapowie kind of player. kind of player. I hope that doesn't catch on, because that just... Kapowie? Should, yeah, Kapowie. It should not be a category of it's player like that we actually respect. Now, right. th you know, this... I'm going to reverse my decision. This already looks pretty good for Anton. Well, you say that. Han's about to do <laughs> do what Han do. But it looks better than a lot of light side openings that I've seen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's better than Han in three freeholders, which I've faced before on turn one. So there's that. Yeah, it's less, less good, certainly. Less good than what you'd like. Well, there's uh, already one down there. Yeah, Han swinging. Blowing up. I kind of like that. If you blocks with the, the phase, well, I don't know. That trooper can kill you. I don't know what to like, Zach. No one knows. Time for the blocking. Yeah, you got to dump, dump cards here. Just get the hand gone. If you're dark side. I don't know. He can't play a freeholders after the fact, right? No, you want it gone for the two against all <laughs> odds on the bottom, right? Give him plus objective damage. Yes. You must get rid of all the cards. I know what the freeholders need. The ability to be played from hand during conflict. Free, both freeholders just pitched. Yeah, that's a dream not happening at this point. Yeah. So really, turn two, you know, freeholders not, not lighting the world on fire. Oh, but it holds. We have one. It holds some cards there, looks like. Oh, yeah, I think it twisted. Did he twist? It, they're acting like twist. Yeah. Drop it. You got to You got to drop it. Talon, uh, Talon roll. roll. Well, Han's going to get a strike first. So he's going to have to waste the Talon roll on nothing. Yeah. Oh, he's not going to do it. That's so much. Oh, he's got to do it. you got to still do it. you got to remove that focus still. Oh, Anton. you got to still play that Talon roll. He could still play it even right after the strike. Well, I guess the once tie the strike has dead. been initiated. Oh man! Oh man! I, should, I mean, it's, it's two extra objective damage. You save the talent roll, which is going to give you a unit on your next turn. That's true. So that's true. It's, it's one or the other. You're going to reduce your reserve value by one here to kill Han. So okay, that's a fair All right, exchange. Anton, I. I... I was with you there. I was emotionally involved. I, I think I'm more surprised that Han didn't kill the TIE Fighter for the two bonus unopposed from Raise the Stakes. That's that's maybe the more confusing. I was thinking they just hadn't resolved that completely yet. And then, yeah. as it turns out, they had. So, there we go. Yeah, because I'd like a little extra damage on that guy. Yeah, looks like he actually drew into Bosk here, which is not going to be playable since he doesn't have a scum resource. But, again, there's only three or four of those in the deck. So Anton, you've been... You've been doing some weird resource confusion. It's been a rough one. There's some control room. Yeah, and the weird part of here is that you always fear the freeholders, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, a lot of times you'd want to hear just attack like the the raise the stakes to turn it off and dump your cards so they can't freeholder you. But now that you know there's two in the discard pile, a little less scary. It's like. That's still a gamble, though, right? Yeah. Like, how far down that, that Dude, hole do you go? Talon rolled the TIE Fighter. I feel like I would want to do that before uh, before I drew up for the turn, wouldn't you? That is uh, the correct time to play that, but such is life. Alrighty, one damage, two damage. Little UO. All right. Holy other cards, man, if he had saved those freeholders and a uh, the little shifty lookout. Dang, that would have been a wicked turn. Yeah. He's only holding two over there, Anton. Holding all the cards? Hello. Hello. Hold them all. Sluice. And yeah, the freeholders. Free Hello. So he could play it for four. Um, talent roll. Yeah, man, I, I like that Anton's deck is really just seems to be built... To get stuff out of your hand. To get hand. stuff out of your hand. This is this is smart meta plays right here. 
I've never seen a more intimidating uh, TIE Fighter Phase 2 board. Standing Stand down. right now. Four resources open. I like the freeholders here for the fact of uh, just board positioning. Um, sleuths are fine. Boss and Spy is going to be okay. Let you peek into the hand. But a freeholders would let you attack and probably survive um, with a unit. But at this point... That defense protocol, assuming it's still around, is going to be just wiping whatever whatever he wants. I feel like you play Botham Spy first, look at the hand, and then decide if you want to play Freeholders or not. Does well, that make I guess sense to you? He did get that card out of hand, so he'd have to pay five for the Freeholders. I don't think that was even an option. Five for the Freeholders? Yeah. Oh, he does have three, three in, didn't he? And he's got Shifty, too. If he so decides. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't have quite worked as we wanted it to. But it could work really well next turn. He's going to get that clearing house back next turn as well. I'm only guessing that uh, Freehold is going to get pitched to another edge battle here. I don't know. Ne I, next turn, I think you can absolutely play it, uh, depending on how it goes. So we'll see. Anton plays one in to Chris's one. Back to Chris. We'll see if he plays in as well. Picard numero dos. There's two. Here we go. Second in. And you know there's a twist there. Two and two twists because you saw it. Because you knew it was coming. Yeah. Two cards left. Free holders. Is it worth it? It does feel it's kind of hard to hold free holders, although with all those resources open next turn, I think it's really good. All right, we got a one versus a two. Dark side wins it. And boss serves a purpose, even with no resources. Yeah. So, still going to get the one unopposed damage. Razor takes his turned off. Hey, that makes that objective kill the sleuth next turn. That's that's not a bad deal for Anton. Yeah, I'm actually a little bit surprised here that Chris didn't drop the second card. Because with a shifty, again, it would make Anton have more cards in hand. Oh, man. Uh, which. Oh, man. <laughs> which would have just... I mean, it would have been one more damage there. He can still dump the card here. Um, maybe that's the the yeah, grand the grand plan. Freeholders goes away. So that's gonna be three damage from the old bot and spy. Man, here. welcome to smugglers. Smugglers doing their magic, and I think it's a good call there to leave shifty. Take the no, not taking the balance. Don't forget about the trooper. Boom. <laughs> not <laughs> forgotten. Yeah, all right, Dow's going to go up to five, and he's got a choice here, Sleuth or the Lookout. And i got to tell you, that Lookout is looking really saucy That's to kill. That's true, yeah, yeah, there he goes. He knows better. Yeah, because that just turns us against all odds on hard. It does. <laughs> it's wild. It does that. It It is inescapable. See you, Reserve. Ooh, Espo's for days. Oh, man. Uh, got any espo? The ups and downs of that uh, in endless yeah, reserve and endless nothing. Reserve. Man, not a, not a real great draw there. No vehicles to play that death from above on. That's rough. And Tom, what are you going to do here? Control really, room. I think just highlighting the uh, this game, something that makes it drastically different, which is that objective system, forcing you to run an interesting combination of cards. Yes. Like five Espos. Like five Espos and five Endless Reserves. Pretty bold objective choices for Manton. Yeah, I mean... Happy to see him in the finals. The thing about this meta before the restriction is that you sort of just had to make bold choices. Yeah. We saw a lot of scum, a lot of Imperial trying to win fast. I mean, at some point you just throw your hands up and say, all right, I'll run anything. I'll run anything that gives me yeah. a shot. All right, target, Cloud City Operative, Swindled, Sleuth, and... Is that a smuggling? Know, it's the, hand, compartment? Yeah, the compartment that no one ever wants. <laughs> Blockade Runner, he's the magic right now. Boy, this could just get it done here, couldn't it? Yeah. Okay. We got Espos everywhere, though, don't worry. All right, Sleuthing around. Sleuth. 
I kind of like the Cloud City for the tactics, but I think it's good to save it for next turn in case you need it. Saving one here is for that swindled. An incorrect, uh, I'm going to block with a single dude. I'm playing the swindled now. Well, <laughs> there you go. Kapow. Kapow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times players will save that. Uh, they'll attack with something, and you basically have to block with two units to do anything. And if you don't, you get swindled, and it's unopposed, and it's wild. <laughs> wild. Wild. And it's also really nice for the objective down there to be able to swindle after the edge battle and put them with a card back in their hand. Um, curious choice, but curious but, choices work sometimes. Yeah. Looks like we got no blockers on that... Uh, Sleuth, blowing up the objective. We got one objective down. One down, two to go. It's probably the correct decision. A sleuth on another objective. Block with both. Here comes the Epspos. <laughs> Epspo facto. Four cards in hand versus uh, three for Chris. Puts one down. And we got Anton. Returns the favor. Two over. And returned three. Three to three. Pass. We got a bunch of juice. Heat. Heat's going to make that Espo oh, awesome. Oh, man. Brutal target. It's going to make it close, but he's not going to be able to finish it here. Heat, heat, heat. What a card. So it's at least the blockade runner probably taking care of business downtown. Well, I was right? gonna say I think Anton still got a card in hand, which is gonna make it where he can take care of business downtown. Wow. I'm curious what he kept there. And Good. the balance. So the dial's only gonna go up to six. And uh Anton is well positioned, only needs one damage. Anton in is this game. praying for rain here. What do you even what do you even send send out for? I don't even know. Prayers. <laughs> pray. You can't pray just to pray. You gotta ask for something, right? Uh, and Devastator save us here? I don't even think that would do it. I'm looking at your face and it says no. No. <laughs> no, he just doesn't have. It would take all his resources, so he could blow up an objective, but that's not gonna be the magic. Now, he could get like a tie attack squadron with a talon roll and an edge card and another talon roll. Two talon rolls. Which I think there's four in the deck, so that's not un unlikely. That That's the best case scenario I can see. Blow up some objectives. Job was not bad. Tax Job was not bad. Time. Job was not bad. I think I do see a devastator in hand. Bill handy devastator. Not really, not really mattering too much. Anton really just looking it over, probably saying, Well, that was nice. You, you know, there's just no way with these cards for me to make this work. Yeah, and it, like I said earlier, that Dark Side game where Anton was playing at first, being able to squeak it out at the end of the Devastator, he's just not in a position here to, to push through enough damage to make it happen. In those reserves, reserves will get it done, though. That'll get the Devastator out, and it'll leave him one to boost the, uh, the dial up by an extra, but. We're looking. Anton's looking for that Hail Mary like last time, that downtown play. Downtown. But I just don't think the numbers work. No, I think you just have to use the Devastator here to commit and, and block, which is unfortunate. It's not what the Devastator likes. Is he going for it? Just go. I mean, just go out with a bang. Kapow. Kapow. Kapow the kapow. Yep. Devastator on the against all odds. Yeah, you can have it. Here you go. On a platter, even. And he's going to pay one, I think. Yep, pays one, ticks the dial up. And now uh, awaits, awaits certain, certain defeat. Doom. Yeah. So here is what's crazy. He's got a Jawa out. Hear me out. Oh, no. He also has a double heat in hand. Oh, no. So technically... He like a, taps the blockade runner down. Oh, no. This is not what you want. Because <laughs> he needs to be able to block, right? Yeah. And then double heat the sleuth and tactics the uh, blockade runner. But Accomplishes one of those things. 
He can still double heat the sleuth. Well, he doesn't have any blockers. Oh, yeah. That's why you need the Jawa. Yeah, now it's seven. Now it's it's certainly certain. Yeah, I'm pretty I mean, there's, sure. There's nothing to do here. I'm pretty sure he was just giving up the ghost there. False report. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I suppose it won't much matter. Well, I think we're gonna call this one. Yeah, they yeah. call it as well. Thank you so much for joining us, guys, for a broadcast from across the the great sea. There, we really appreciate you joining us. And this is from Dark Sphere in London. Uh, and this was uh, courtesy of Fully Operational LCG as a YouTube channel you need to check out as well as the Frozen and Carbonite podcast. If you're over uh, in the UK, check these guys out. They're doing some good work. And if you're in the States, well, the internet is a vast and easy to travel place. So check them out as well. Thank you guys uh, for watching. We'll catch you next time. Zach, you have anything to add? I got nothing. We'll see you guys later. Cheers.